Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Clint with the Scottish Clans Podcast. Thanks for joining me. I'm here in the beautiful Wasatch Cache National Forest up in Logan Canyon. This is what will become the Logan River, but it's not that yet. It's still the beaver. Anyway, I uh, thought this would be a good scenic location for a to record a YouTube video, and hopefully the rushing of the mighty waters behind me doesn't completely drown me out. What I'd like to cover today is just the Cliff Notes version of a podcast episode that I recently published on the McNeils. And the big question is, was it one clan or was it two? Some of the traditional genealogies and, and customs and traditions have the McNeils of Bara and the McNeils of Gia, kind of representing the, the head of the Argyle McNeils as descending from two different brothers. Even the Lord Lion in more recent years has acknowledged the McNeil of Bara as the chief of the whole clan and name of McNeil. So here's an interesting question and I'd love to see your comments down below. <clears throat> Do you think the Lord Lion should have the authority to make such a claim? Uh, or, or should that be for the clan itself to decide who they want to follow as their head? Um, I'm not an expert in Scottish law and what the Lord Lion has authority to do or what he doesn't have authority to do. <clears throat> but I do know, studying the history of the Scottish clans, that some clans did not like the person who the government acknowledged as the head of the clan, and so they uh, rebelled and put their own guy in, in place. <clears throat> Just making sure my notes are staying, staying from going away. So anyway, there's some pretty uh, interesting history on who gets to decide who's the chief. Were the McNeils one clan or two in history? Well, <clears throat> there's three reasons why some scholars do not consider them to be the same, uh, the same clan historically, regardless of what they're considered now. One of those is the chosen given names. Many different clans have certain given names that are very popular, especially among the chiefs, but maybe amongst the broader clan. <clears throat> and you see these names as their chiefs pop up over and over again. The McNeils of Bara and the McNeils of Gia, they, aside from the name Neil, tend to choose different names, especially amongst their chiefs. The, uh, another one of the things that people point to as evidence that they were not the same and that they're two different clans completely despite having the same name is that during the conflict, after the... <laughs> a mouse just ran right, right under my legs, I think. <clears throat> during the conflict, after the fall of the Lordship of the Isles, when the Scottish king found that the John, the Lord of the Isles, was in cahoots with the Douglas, and the English king, he stripped the lordship from this John MacDonald. And after that, the MacDonalds themselves claimed that that continued for a while into about 1545. However, the MacLeans of Duart chose to assert their independence from the lordship, and you have a feud arising between the two. During this feud, the MacNeils of Barra and the McNeils of Gia took different sides. So, the, so the, that was number two reason. They chose different sides, so they seem to act independently of each other. They're not acting in concert under a given head. Now, you could come back and argue that point. You could say, well, Clint, <clears throat> the McLeods of Lewis and the McLeods of Dunvegan and Harris, those were actually connected clans but they acted quite independent of each other through succeeding years. Also, the Frasers might be looked at another example to, to counter that argument, that they acted independently, and that's a sign that they were actually two completely unrelated kindreds. Another, another example you might bring up are the Frasers. The Frasers of Lovett and the Frasers of Philorth in the lowlands, in the northeastern lowlands, they actually do spring from a common root but they, throughout the centuries, acted completely independent of each other 
went completely on their own. So the fact that they took two different sides, I don't think is a very strong argument. Another argument is that their heraldry is different. Now, I don't know a lot about heraldry. I looked this up, though. I looked at the shield and the symbols that are used therein for the McNeils of Bara. And I also looked at the McNeils of Gia. <clears throat> yeah, they're different. There's some symbols that both of them share. Is that a strong argument? I don't, I don't think I know enough about heraldry to put a lot. But I'll include a link that I found that I thought was helpful for me in studying the different symbols. Not just in heraldry generally, like all over the place, but specifically in Highland heraldry. I found an interesting website on that. So I'll post, post that below. <clears throat> I think the most foundational or more, the strongest argument that I found was from a Scottish scholar named Ronald Black. And I'll post a link to this. It's, it's a PDF I found. Actually, I found it in the Wikipedia notes for the Clan McNeil. I found a downloadable PDF. And so I say, but it's scholarly work, which shows you that it's not completely flimsy to go and read a Wikipedia article as long as you know what you're doing and what Wikipedia is good for. In this case, it was good to connect me with additional sources, such as Ronald Black's work on the McNeils. The point of the paper <clears throat> was that the McNeils actually are found in the manuscript of 1467, which has genealogies of many Highland clans in there. But he goes into detail on his own research, and he, he finds these two kindreds, the McNeils of Barra and the McNeils of Gia, to be completely separate and unrelated. For those of you who are interested in the uh, McNeil background, I'll give you just a short version of what I shared on the podcast, and then you can go check that out. Long story short, though, the McNeils of Barra actually were established in the Isle of Butte. Later on, they, the Isle of Butte changed hands in the mid-1200s. You had the Battle of Largs in 1263 that shifted control of the Isles from the Norwegian crown to the Scottish crown. Actually, the Battle of Largs was lost by the Norwegians. The weather helped. But it wasn't until 1266 that those Isles are actually changed hands and now they're owned by the, by the King of Scots. It looks like the McNeils continued under the Stuart lordship for a while longer. Now keep in mind the Stuarts are not the monarchs of Scotland yet. Okay, that'd be a, a couple of generations from now. But they are very powerful in this Renfrew um, mouth of the Firth of Clyde area. Very powerful in that area. That's kind of their center. And the McNeils thrived for a little while longer under their leadership. However, the McRorys would later end up giving the Isle of Barra and Boysdale in South Uist to the McNeils. And so there you have the McNeils of Barra. They turn into infamous pirates. And there's some really cool stuff there. Once again, go check the podcast. I did it in two parts. And then that second part, I really focused on the McNeils of Barra going out of a book by John McLeod called Highlanders, History of the Gales. Anyway, if you want more infor information on the McNeils of Barra as pirates, feel free to go check that out. But that's how they got over there. The, uh, the McNeils of Gia, Ronald Black found them to be completely unrelated to the McNeils of Barra. But he did claim that they were from the same stock very closely as the McLeans of Duart and Loch Bui and more distantly from the Lamonts, the McSweens, the McLaughlins, and the McEwens. Now, some of you might be out there thinking, well, what would DNA? Could we solve this really easily with DNA? And I do believe we went into this group of clans in my interview with Ethan Hunt on the podcast, which clippets of that may still be released on YouTube. Um, it's been a little busy lately, so give me a second to get to that, but I might be posting clips of that, that interview with Ethan Hunt, who is studying uh, genetics at UC Davis. Had a very informative visit with him, shared a lot of really cool things with DNA and how it relates to clans. 
So go check out the podcast if you don't want to wait until eventually I get those clips up on YouTube. But that subject did come up with the McNeils, and I'll let you go find in more detail what we discussed there. Anyway, that's what I wanted to share with you. Were the McNeils two clans or one? I think what the story teaches us when we're talking about our own connection to the past, to these clans, is that one, well, I think the major, major lesson here is that we have to be careful because we have a last name making assumptions about clans that we're attached to. If your last name's McNeil or you have McNeils in your family tree, don't just assume that your ancestors were famous pirates and based out of Kissimmee Castle in Barra, in the Outer Hebrides. You might want to do some research and find out where your ancestors came from. Now, not only do we have the McNeils of Barra and the McNeils of Gia at the head of the Argyle kindred, there may be other McNeils out there. I know that the Mackays of Strath Neighbor, way up in the far north of Scotland, also really liked the, um, really liked the name Neil. Some, some, several prominent members of that clan, and they have some Neil sons that are descended from there. But once again, just because your last name's Nielsen and they, your ancestors came from Scotland, or you still live in Scotland, doesn't mean you're from the Mackays. Okay, so big, big message here is don't assume. Finding that uh, you have a list of seps of certain clans and your name is under a certain clan does not automatically mean because you have that last name that you're connected to that clan. It does not excuse us from doing the hard work of genealogy and getting in there and actually tracing our ancestry back to a certain place. So if you have McNeils in your family tree and you trace your lineage back to Argyle, specifically the Kintyre Peninsula, Knapdale, Kintyre, that area, or actually from Gia, then there you go. You can be pretty confident about that. If you trace back to Barra, then you can be confident about that. I'll leave that to you guys to find out, but comment and post in, in the comments below what you think about the McNeils, one clan or two. Um, any additional insights that I didn't share, please feel free. And until next time, Marshen Leev and Drasta.